Good afternoon, everyone. This is Sunday, uh, July the 25th, and we're so glad to be here another day mm -hmm. uh, to worship uh, God's name and to honor him and recognize him. I'm going to open up in a word of our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you for being you. We thank you for being obedient and, and loving God Almighty so much that you uh, gave your life for us so we could be saved if we accept you by faith that you have died for our sins even though you were sinless you died for our sins and you were buried and you were resurrected by God Almighty and you're sitting at the right hand side of the Father making intercessory prayers for us because we know not what to pray for but Lord those who are listening we ask you to continue to lead them in your holy word and allow your Holy Spirit that you have given to all of us as a gift, those who have accepted you as their Lord and Savior and received your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the gift uh, of your Spirit to lead us and direct us in all the things we say and do. So Lord, we uh, just honor you and thank you for all that you have done and all that you will do. We thank you for forgiving us for our sins because we have committed sins when we don't do what you tell us to do and when we don't say what you tell us to say. So Lord, we confess and we ask you to forgive us for those things we have trespassed against you, Heavenly Father. And we, your words say that you are faithful when we're not faithful. And if we confess our sins, you're faithful to forgive us for our sins. So Lord, we thank you for everything you've done. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And we're going to Open up, if you just turn to Isaiah, the 40th chapter. Let me start off, I just want to read a couple of verses there so you know where I'm coming from in the Word today. Mm -hmm. Isaiah, the 40th chapter. And it says in um, verses 6 and 7, and then I'm going to read eight. It says, a voice says, call out prophecy, and then he answered, what shall I call out? And the voice answered, all humanity is frail as grass. All that make it attractive is charms and lovingness, is um, momentary. It's just like a flower, it says, in the field. Momentary. You know, it only lasts for a moment. Mm hmm and it says, the grass withers and the flower fades. And when the breath of the Lord blows on it, most certainly all people are like grass. Hmm. And the main verse here, it says, the grass withers, the flowers fades, but the word of God stands forever. That's where that James mm -hmm. and Peter got that from, right? Right. The word of God stands forever. And as we know in reading the scripture, the word. Is that what it's going to be the title? The word of God? Stand the word life. of life. The word of life? Yeah, that, I'm going to go to that in a minute. That's John 1. Uh, in fact, we can turn to, to John 1 right now. We're talking about the word today. We're talking about Jesus Christ. The word of life. Mm -hmm. He came so we would have life and have it more abundant. He didn't come to um, to bring destruction on us. You know? No, he did not. He came because he loved God, and this is the only way. If you receive Christ, he is the only way, as it says in John the 14th chapter. I'll read that. I'm going to stay with his word, not my own words. Uh, John the 14th chapter says um, in the 6th verse Jesus said to him I am the only way to God and the real truth and the real life no one comes to the Father but through me Amen and then if you go to um, 1 John 1 John first chapter And it starts off in that first verse. It says, I am writing about what existed from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, 
and what we have looked at and touched with our, our hands concerning the word of life. The word of life of Jesus. And it says, the one who existed even before the beginning of the world, Christ. That's what I'm talking about. And that's, that's why we end the word. And it says, in the life and the aspect of his being was manifested, and we have seen it as eyewitnesses and testify and declare to you the life, the eternal life, who was already existing with the Father and was actually made visible to his followers. And if you just... You water I did, but I'll be all right. I'll be all right. And then if you go to, uh, to Genesis... So you would see the, the Bible's just... Oh, is that one and two? Yes. And I'm going to go back to it. I'm holding my finger there. And then Genesis? Uh, Genesis. If you go to the second chapter of Genesis, I mean, excuse me, the first chapter of Genesis, the 26th verse. So you will know that I'm, I'm not just saying something. I'm saying what the words say. What? It says here, then God said, let us Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the Son is Christ, and you see the Holy Spirit and the Father, make man in our image according to our likeness, not physical, but spiritual personality and moral likeness. So we're supposed to be <coughs> in the spiritual personality and moral likeness, and let them have Complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the cattle, and over the entire earth, and over everything that creeps and crawls on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of the likeness of God, he created him, male and female, and created them. And he given man authority over the earth. Yeah, he did. And had nothing about space going up there, you know, fan around. You know, but as you um, look at that, you know, it, it, it kind of tickled me because, yes, he did. But when you look at the third chapter, mm -hmm. they forfeit that. Right, they, they forfeit did. It. He forfeited. And then it says, uh, going back to First John. Jesus came back and redeemed it back. He redeemed it back. The third chapter you says. You that, didn't you? Yes, I did. Mm hmm and what we have seen and heard, we also proclaim to you so that you too may have fellowship as partners with us and indeed have fellowship, which is a distinguishing mark. Born again believers is with the Father and with the, his Son, Jesus Christ. And uh, now if you would just uh, turn with me for... I'm going to finish reading that. It says here in the fifth verse, this is the meshes of God's promise of revelation, which we have heard from him and now announced to you that God is light. Mm -hmm. He is holy. His meshes is truthful. He is perfect in righteousness. And in him there is no darkness at all. No sin, no wickedness, no imperfection, as I had already said. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness of sin, we lie and do not practice the truth. Mm -hmm. But if we really walk in the light, that is, live each and every day in conformity with the precepts of God, as he himself is in the light, we have true, unbroken fellowship with one another. He with us and we with him and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin erasing the stain of sin Amen. keeping us cleansed from the sin in all forms and manifestations if we say we have no sin refusing to admit that we are sinners we have deluded ourselves and the truth is not in us his word does not live in our hearts. And we're talking about his word. His word should be in our heart. And when his word is in our heart, then we 
walk a certain way and we talk a certain way, just like he and says, if we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, as I pray, he is faithful, just, and true, his own nature and promises, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us continually from all unrighteousness, our wrongdoing, everything not in conformity with his will and purpose. Mm -hmm. If we say that we are not sin, refusing to admit acts of sin, we make him out to be a liar by contradicting him, and his word is not in us. So it's important for us to read and study his word daily so we can walk the way he wants us to walk. You had to read Amen. his word. You got to get it in yourself. And, and that's something that did he want us to do? You have a choice of what you're putting in yourself. Because mm -hmm. if you don't put him in yourself, you can wreck yourself. And then later you'll be talking about, oh, I don't know how this happened. But he does. And so you might as well confess what you have done and go to him in prayer. And then if you go to uh, 1 Peter, so I'm going to stand on the, this topic about the word. He is the word. He is our truth. He is the light. First it says in uh, 1 Peter, the first chapter. And these are for born again believers. If you have been born again. It says here in the... Uh, we go from the... Uh, uh, Verse to chapter 1, starting with 20, it says, For he was foreordained, foreknown before the foundation of the world. As you already know, we read that in Genesis. Before the foundation of the world, but has appeared publicly in the last times for your sake. And it says, And through him you believe confidently in God, the Heavenly Father who raised him from the dead, talking about Jesus, was resurrected from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are centered and rest in God. Since by your obedience to the truth you have purified yourselves for sincere love of believers, see that you love one another from the heart, always unselfishly seeking the best for one another. That, that's how God really knows you belong to him. Oh. Seeking the best for one another and, and love. having love, love, for, one another. love for one another. Because see, heart. when you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, God just pours all that love down in you. So when, when you receive all his love, uh, you may have had out against somebody, and when you receive his love and been born again, you want to... Uh, Go to that person and ask for forgiveness. You forgive people because you have a love of him and you just like he loves us and forgives us for our sins, you are able to do the same thing. Well, I don't think most people are taught that when you're born again, every, you receive everything. You receive everything. But you have to exercise it. Right. You and have you to confess it. Tell it. You and have to do it. That's right. You have to confess it. That's right. Stop saying what the world's saying. Right. And you can't <laughs> go around like the world said. I just can't forgive them. That's what they say. I can't stand them. That's you know? exactly what they I say. I hate them. And see, there's no hate in God. Yes, the world says that. That's what the world say. Better not call me. I don't care if he's dead. In fact, I wish he was dead. Mm. Or she was dead. Yeah, you know, people have stuff done to them, and it, it brings out all that old person, which right. is... Not supposed to be in the, in the God's word, and I'm gonna show you in a minute. He said, mm. Get rid of all of that. Oh, yeah, because you can it. get rid of it. And then it says, Here we're supposed to always unselfishly seek the best for one another. For you have been born again, that is, mm -hmm. reborn from above spiritually. Like I said, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God made us in their image, spiritual, spiritual image. And it's, we were transformed, renewed, and set apart for his purpose, not your purpose. Mm. Not of the seed which is perishable. You know, our seeds are, you know, and the 
world, you know, the way it's set up. Yeah, you, you had a seed from your from your dad that went to your mama's womb, mm -hmm. you know, in her uterus, and that's how you became yeah. Bob Carter. Okay. Bobby Carter. Mm -hmm. That's perishable. Yeah, it is. We're bodies are we perishable. Mm -hmm. But see, when we've been born, reborn again spiritually from above. from above, it says there. I'm not a corrupt. Not a corruptible seed, it says, from which is imperishable and immortal, that is through the living and everlasting word of God. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. And it says, for all flesh is like grass. That's why I start off in Isaiah. It's like grass. Yeah. And all its glory like the flower of the grass. And the grass withers and the flowers fall off. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this word, the good news, the salvation, which was preached to you. And that's what that's what we're getting today. You know, this this is the good news. So you know uh, that we have a father that loves us and has given us the son. And the only way to get to God is through the son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was sinless. He didn't have no blemishes or anything up on him. And he died on the cross. He was sacrificed for our sins. Mm -hmm. We're washed in his blood. And we have received him. And so therefore, we're no longer going to perish. Just the body, but our spirit and our soul is going to be everlasting. Well, I don't think a lot of people realize that. When mm -hmm. you um, depart off this earth, as we know, mm -hmm. this body stops right. breathing. The heart stops beating. Your spiritual person, which is the real you, either goes up or down. Right. And this is what it mm -hmm. depending on which way you go. Right. <laughs> Whether you've been born again right. or not, if you have been born again, there's there's pl plenty of time left right now. I mean, you know, time is shortening up for some people. You know, uh, with this pandemic, um, they may not have a chance. May not have to time. be born again, or you know, if somebody's talking to them, they may be under so much medication and um, anesthetics that their mind they can't even comprehend it. And, and just to even make it plainer, to you go to Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. Mm -hmm. That's what third was. Yeah, I was wondering why he had me reading. See, God has a plan for everything. Even when we study the Word and everything, He brings it all together. We don't have nothing to do with it. We just read and study as He has us to do. His Word is powerful. His Word is powerful. And it says um, in the 18th verse, it said, I said to myself regarding the sons of men, God is surely testing them in order to see that by themselves, without God, see, without God, that's what you have to understand, without his word, without God, they are only some animals. It says, for the earthly fate of the sons of men and the fate of animals is the same. One, as one dies, so dies the other. Indeed, they are all the same breath. There is no preeminence or advantage for the man in himself. See? In ourself, so you can be doing all you want to do in the world and be saying you have all of this, you've built all of that, but you just with yourself, you're not with God. And then it says, Over an animal, for all of this is just vanity. It says, All go to the same place, all came from dust, and all will return to dust. Who knows if the spirit of man ascends up? And the spirit of the animal descends downward to the earth. So I have seen that there is nothing better than that a man should be happy in his own works and activities. But that is his portion. For will, for who will bring him back to see what will happen? You know, he's either going to be with the Lord or he's going to um, just be by himself. That's where, That's where he's going to end. He's going to, hmm? Is that what it says? Yeah. That well, he, he's, just know, gonna share, he's just going to get his portion of what he has down here. You know, his own works, his own activity. 
Well, we don't want to put man on the same level as an animal. No. Because man is a speaking spirit. Right, he is a speaking spirit. Uh, an animal is not. Right. Uh, actually, an animal I don't have a spirit. Well, I'm just reading from the scripture. Well, this is Solomon. Right. I mean, right, right, right. here, but as, right. as you read through here, right. he's talking about the flesh. Right, he's but well, that's what I'm talking about, not right. the spirit. Right. Because he's, but, this man here is not spiritually with God. No, he's they a, wasn't in the Old Testament. No, he's not spiritually a lot, with God. The kings were anointed with the spirit and priests and right. different other people that God anointed. But regular people wasn't ignoring it. Right, they wasn't ignoring it. And so, uh, you know, we can, today we, we can be. Well, yes, we can be. Jesus Christ is the, is the one that baptizes we, us we with the Holy Spirit. Be. You know, uh, that's That's be. why we need Jesus Christ, because he's the one that baptizes you with the Holy right. Spirit. The Holy Spirit baptizes you into the body of that's Christ. That's right. And then Jesus baptizes you with the Holy Spirit, fills you with it. Right. For service. That's right. And to be a witness. As it says in Ecclesiastes, the third verse, uh, third, third chapter, the 11 verse, it says, He has made everything beautiful and appropriate in his time. Mm -hmm. He has also planted eternity, a sense, this is what he does put in man's heart, even a then. A sense of divine purpose. Yeah, he, he has planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose in human heart. A mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy itself. God, see, this isn't in an animal. Right, that's man. not in an animal. Right, and it says, yet man... But, can... well, I know what you're saying. Mm -hmm. when, when we die and an animal dies, we both go back to dust. Right. That's what he said. Right, that's Just, right. But you're not in that grave. Right. You're either going up or down. Well, it says the animals but going you know, down. Uh, it, it says talks the about, animals it going talks down. about uh, animals being in heaven, though. Right. Well, it says it don't know if the, it doesn't know. It says That's who knows if said, the, he right. Know. Who knows? It's a question mark. He wasn't saying for sure. Right. I should have said it's a question. It said yeah, who it knows if the spirit of man right. ascends um, upward and the spirit of the animal descends downward to the earth. Who knows? Yeah. But he. He did know this for sure. Uh, he even put a question mark with this. So he says, so I have seen there yeah, is questions. nothing better than that a man should be happy in his own works and activities. Mm -hmm. But that is his portion, his share. For who will bring him back to see what will happen after he's gone? But going back to that 11th verse, what I was uh, saying there, uh, this is what God has done. He has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. Because he you has, look in, uh, mm -hmm. just, uh, I don't mean to interrupt you, but in Revelations 4, 7, it says uh, about uh, the living creatures. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one had a, 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 like a lion. Right, a lion face. Mm -hmm. One like a calf, mm -hmm. one like a man, right. one like a flying eagle. Right. So, we we don't know exactly what's in heaven, but we I, don't. when That's we get there, mark. I think it's going to be some things that you haven't seen on earth. Right. That's why I said who will bring him back to right. we'll see what will right. happen after you gone, know, because we right. don't know. You know. What we're trying to do is get everybody to go up, right? not down. Because I, I believe there are some things because it's fixed about under the earth. Right. Well, it is. Nobody's been um, under the earth. We haven't been under the earth. I don't care how far you can drill down, you haven't been well, under see, you know, the earth. At one time, they was using uh, subs that were made out of iron, and it, it only goes steel that could go down so far. Now they use tantanic. Titanic. Titanic. Yeah, you know, and go a little and deeper. Go a little deeper, but, but still they not still all can't down. go. Uh, the pressure's too the much. Pressure. And even in the book of Job's, uh, God was telling Job about a sea creature that lived down there. Right. That uh, he described that we haven't never seen nothing like that on earth. Right. Right. We have never seen it. And, nothing and, like that. Uh, you mean you get a chance to go to Job? And then he was swallowed up by a, 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 a huge fish. Well, uh, uh, that was uh, Jonah. Right, Jonah. It was swallowed up by, by a huge, huge fish. fish. Mm -hmm. So there is things, invisible, 
Invisible. Invisible. Right. That we haven't seen. But what I, what I was trying to let mm -hmm. them know, God has not left us where we don't have something. You know, even in the Old Testament, yeah, says, we got something He has to. made everything beautiful and appropriate in His time. He also planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose in the human heart. Mm -hmm. See, it's in our heart, Amen. a mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. You know, a man be wanting to. You know, as you grow and attain things, what, honey? 11, 11, and you, you know, you just never satisfied. And it says, uh, yet men could not find out, comprehend, and grasp what God has done, his overall plan from the beginning to the end. And they be trying, you know, to, uh, to see how this earth was formed and all of that. Well, but they, um, they're just not able. You know, uh, it's actually all written in the Word. It is. Um, starting with Genesis on through. Right. Because if you really want to know who God is and what God has done and what he will do, it's all through the word of God. It is. It's not just a, a book of uh, yeah. myths. And, no, it's not. It's the truth. And, um, it's all woven together. It, yeah, but see, you can't really understand God until you're born again. Because right. when you read this, it's just like reading any other history book that you might get off the shelf at school or go to college and read or anything else or what some man has written. But the, the Bible was written by men who were inspired, anointed, is inspired by the Holy the, Spirit. That was, right. I went over that on Thursday. You sure did. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. And when you become born again, you say, oh. I didn't see that before. Right, you didn't see it before. And then some people even say this is a fairy tale. Right, they do. They mm -hmm. really do. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the, birth, the virgin birth, they say that that was just a, a myth. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> a lot of things that they say is a myth, that's what's keeping them back from being born again. It is. Keeping them from getting healed from sicknesses and oh, it's diseases. Oh, keeping them from. Uh, it's from keeping them. Uh, it's it's holding them, them back. Sick. They don't have to time. give It's actually their heart. keeping them in bondage. It is, and uh, um, Jesus came so we can have life more abundant. And have it more uh, life abundantly and freely. Yeah, freely. Live, free, live free. Free. People think they are free, but, but they're they really not. in bondage. They don't have any peace. And then if you go to Isaiah the fifty-fifth chapter. I'm just yeah. reading this so we can uh, stay on our word here. Uh, the 11th verse, it says, well, so, the door. I so, it at 55, uh, 55 uh, 11, it says, so will my word be which goes out of my mouth. Amen. It will not return to me void, useless, without results, without accomplishing what I desire, <coughs> and without Amen. succeeding in the matter. For which I sent it. See, he he sent Jesus here uh, for a purpose, so we would know of him and uh, and believe in him to set us free. Well, you know what, like when you, we've been going through the Gospels a lot, mm -hmm. and when you go through everything that Jesus said and did, mm -hmm. there's a lot of miracles. It was it was. So many miracles. You were talking about one this morning, how he right. fed 5,000 right. people. Just right. 5,000 men, not including women and children. Right. Which you said came to about 10,000. And if they had to try to buy enough bread and fish to feed all them people, it wasn't there wasn't the enough villages. around in all the villages. Right. Or they, who knows how much it would have cost. Right. And they didn't have that amount and of that money. And that was a miracle that he looked up to heaven and breast blessed the bread and the fish and broke it and get, and distributed it to them. Right. And everybody was full. It was it was full and it was bastics. Twelve bastics remaining. And and right. what was so funny about all of that, he had did all of that. Um, Brother Carter, he had right. got the bread from the young man and the fish. Uh, and he uh it said a little boy. He wasn't a uh, right. you know a teenager. Just a, just a, uh, just a little boy. Mm -hmm. And he had five oh, yeah. barley loaves. Uh, go to John the sixth chapter. Uh, the ninth verse. It said that there is a little boy here who has five 
barley loaves and two fishes. But what are these for so many people? And it said, Jesus uh, said, how the people sit down to eat. See, he had confidence in God, the same confidence we're supposed to have. Amen. And because he was just a man. And said, now the ground there was covered with abundance of grass. So the men sat down about 5,000 in number. Mm -hmm. Didn't count the women and the children. Mm -hmm. And said, if, if it was so, it exceeded more than 10,000. Mm -hmm. And uh, then it says, then Jesus took the loaves and when he had gave, given thanks, see, he thanked God for them. He prayed over it and he thanked God for the food and, and see that's what we and we supposed to do that children we supposed to um and i'm gonna be honest sometimes i don't i'm at work and i'm rushing i found it got me something to eat i i didn't ate my you plum say, I'm thank you orange. lord mm -hmm. and, and then i say lord forgive me please bless what i just ate i should have asked you first and I, well i got it. i'm in the kind of like the habit when i get ready when anything mm -hmm. i eat or drink i say thank you lord right i yeah. mean i don't have a Sometimes I don't have enough time to, you know, really pray over it and sanctify it, and you know, right. you can you can pray a long prayer, but God is looking at your heart. That's all He's looking at. Just like the man that went up to pray, He said, "Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner." Right. He didn't say too much. And He don't. Well, he Lord, knows that I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all you, right. you confess, and He He do be looking at your heart. He know right. that you that, uh, when you doing something out of spite. But what was a bad about it the people had followed him and he mm -hmm. he had to cross over to the mountain to get a, away from because he needed some rest too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then it started away, off right, right in the mm -hmm. 26th verse mm -hmm. uh he was giving words to the to the people and, he, and jesus said i assure you and most solemnly say to you you have been searching for me not because you saw the attested miracles but because you ate the loaves and were filled all right but then when he went on to give them the word, they was uh, later saying, uh, they, on the 30th verse, so they said uh, to him, what sign of test and miracle will you do that we may see it and believe it? What supernatural work will you do as proof? They still he want him to prove it. He already did it. Just like he's already done he's, a lot now, and he's people already are, did it and he's, are looking for signs and miracles. Right, and how many? How much do we have to show? If he done any more, God the Father done any more for us, we wouldn't have a free will. We wouldn't have a free we, will. He has given us a free will. We have to choose now. Right. That's why it's so important that we st you stand the word, and that's why we stand the word. And she is really, um, and then this you, is the word of life. Right. right. And then you go to um, James, the first chapter. Mm -hmm. The first, yeah, the first chapter. Um, he even has in, in his book, he, he's talking about... Um, and a rich man is, this is the 10th verse. It says, verse. the rich man is the glory in being humbled by trials, revealing human frailties, knowing that true riches are found in the grace of God. Those are where the true riches Same are. the same thing, isn't it? Uh-huh. For like the flower of the grass, he will pass away. Mm. And it says, for the sun rises with a scorching wind and withers, the grass, the flower falls off and the beauty fades away. So too with a rich man in the midst of his pursuits fade away. And then it says, blessed, happy, spiritually prosperous, favored by God is mm -hmm. the man who is steadfast under trial and per per perseveres when tempered. For when he has passed the test and has proved, been approved, he will receive the victor's crown of life, that's which right. the Lord has promised to those who love him. See, that's, that's the crown of life. And it says, the crown of life. Yeah, yeah, the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Love him. And that people need to know that they love him. 
not just doing all these kind of works as it says in the uh, Ecclesiastes of vanity. Yeah, you know, something that's going to perish. Perish. Yes, it's going to perish. perish. But we doing things because God has set us aside as a purpose to be used by him. Then 13 says, let no one, when he is tempted, uh, I am, uh, let no one say when he is tempted, excuse me, I am being mm-hmm. tempted by God. Because a lot of people, they will blame God when they tempt. It says, for temptation does not originate from God, <coughs> but from our own flaws. God cannot be tempted by what is evil. And he himself tempts no one. And I told you before, he's poured everything in us that we that we need to, to overcome temptation. Uh, you receive the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit directs us and guides us and tells us what to do and what to say okay. to avoid temptation. You cannot be tempted with what is evil. Right. You know? And then the 14th verse says, but each one is tempted when he drags away, enticed, and baited to commit sin by his own worldly desire and lust and passion. And this is what distracts us. Ourself. 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 I'm not going to sit here and say I don't, I haven't been distracted. I have. Mm -hmm. But the Holy Spirit also lets me know, you know, you better uh, stop and go this be way or you know, you're business. not you, that's not right what be you're about doing the Lord's business. and I, then I'll stop hmm. because he does tell us and then it says if you're born again if you're born again other than that you're just doing what the world is doing and it don't look bad anyway you just you know well you say it ain't nothing wrong with it well it's nothing wrong with it. the world say that and then when the illicit desire has conceived it gives birth to sin. That's when you have committed it. And when sin has run its course, it gives birth of death. See, anything that's not of God is, is death. And it says, do not be misled, my beloved brothers and sisters. Everything given and every perfect gift is from above. So everything that's Good is from above. It comes down from the Father of lights, the creator, the sustainer of the heavens, in whom there is no variation, no rising or setting or shadow cast by his turning. He is perfect and never changes. See, there's no shadow or anything with him. He's and all he light. Changes. And he never changes. It says, it is his own will that he gave us birth as his children. You know, be born again by the word of truth so that we would be a kind of first fruits of his create, His creatures, a prime example of what he created to be set apart to himself, sanctified, made holy with his divine purposes. Amen. Understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let everyone be quick to hear, be careful, thoughtful listeners, slow to speak, mm. a speaker of carefully chosen words, mm. slow to anger. See, these are things we got to get out. That's what you got to practice. That's, yes, that's the yes, practice. yes. That's yes. exercise in there. You got to. You're exercising. Slow to anger, patient. Reflective and forgiving. Mm. For the resentful, deep seated anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. And we are the righteousness of God, so we gotta we gotta therefore behave that way and do that, what he tells us to do. Mm. It does not produce the righteousness of God. That standard of behavior is required. Oh Lord, it's required of us. That's what it says. It's required of us. So get rid of all uncleanliness. That's why he said she, we got to choose the words we say. Right. That's what you're confessing your with your mouth. Because words you in trouble. If you're saying what the world is saying, you're not saying what God is right. saying. Because to be friends of the world, you're enemies against God. Right. 
and he says exercise, he's got all this stuff that we're supposed to be doing here. So if we be saying things that we shouldn't say, Carter, that'll lead to unrighteousness, won't it? It will. It'll lead to sin, it'll, it'll lead to it, death. It'll lead you to sin and death. And so it, it says in the 21st verse, so get rid of all uncleanliness and all that remains of wickedness. These are for us church people, children. Yeah, <laughs> I'm going to stop right here. Right. So you won't be saying, my sister, my brother, uh-uh, it's for all of us. He's talking to the church. He says, so get rid of all uncleanliness. Well, you, you wouldn't think that was in the church. Right. That's because of everybody be perpetrating a fraud. That's well, he's good. talking to church folks. And no sooner than some get on the parking lot, they be cussing somebody out that may have put a little dent in their cup. <laughs> well, so, <laughs> You know. <laughs> so, so get rid of all uncleanliness and all that remains of wickedness. Mm. And with a humble spirit, receive the word of God, Amen. which is implanted, actually rooted in the heart. Didn't I read that in Ecclesiastes? That's the same thing that was actually rooted, same thing rooted in your heart, which is able to save your soul. Mm. You know what your soul is, your mind. Right. And it says, but prove yourself doers, as you said yesterday in the yeah. faith class. Be doers. Be doers of the word. That, that's actively and continually obeying God's precepts. So if you have faith in God and, and you try to uh, get a manifestation of something that you're praying about and asking for, not just for yourself or family, friend, or what have you, you had to be con actively and continually obeying God's precepts. It says, not merely listeners who hear the word but fail to internalize this meaning, deluding yourselves by unsound reasoning, contrary to the truth. It says, for if anyone only listens to the word without mm -hmm. obeying it, he is like a man who looks very carefully at his natural face in the mirror. But once he has looked at himself and gone away, he immediately forgets what he looked like. But he who looks carefully into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and faithfully abides by it, not having become a careless listener who forgets but an active doer who obeys, he will be blessed and favored by God in what he does in his life of obedience. If anyone thinks himself to be religious, mm -hmm. crucially observant of rituals of his faith, and does not control his tongue, like you were saying, you gotta be mm -hmm. careful, but deludes his heart, this person's religion is worthless, is fruitful, is burned. And it says pure and unblemished religion as it is expressed in the outward acts in the sight of God and the Father is this, to visit and look after the fatherless and the widowers in distress and keep oneself uncontaminated in the circle of secular mm -hmm. world. And then if you go to John, the book of John, because my time is running low, uh, I'm going to go there because we end the word. I'm going to stay with the word. And that, uh, John, the, uh, John. But let's go to let's go to John the thirteenth chapter, and I'm gonna get back on this on uh, Thursday. Yeah, I just was uh, reading this in uh, First Timothy, yeah, uh, the fourth chapter. Mm -hmm. um, it's telling us something here in the sixth verse. If you point out these instructions to the brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. you will be a good servant of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Constantly nourished through study mm -hmm. on the word, on the word of the faith and of the good Christian doctrine Amen. you have closely followed, mm -hmm. but have nothing to do with irrelevant folklore and silly myths. On the other hand, discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness, keeping yourself spiritually fit. Amen. And then it says, for physical training is of some value, because a lot of people like to go to the gym. Right. But godliness, spiritual training, physical training is worth something, but spiritual training is 
of value in everything and in every way, since it holds promise for the present life and for the life to come. Amen. And you said that's the fourth chapter. That's First Timothy, the fourth chapter. That was verses uh, six, seven, and eight. But that whole fourth chapter is is talking about. Um, The first verse says, um, Now the Spirit speaks expressly in these latter times that sons should depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrine of devils. Mm -hmm. Amplified reads, But the Holy Spirit expressly and unmistakably declares that in the latter times some will turn away from the faith paying attention instead to deceitful and seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. That's true. That's He's talking to church people. He's talking to church people. You know, because, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, once you're born again, once you're saved, you're for once saved, ever saved. But you need to read the book of Jude. You do. Because he was talking about some people that, you know, got saved when they came out of Egypt, but yet they perished. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm, all, I'm all Go ahead. What were you at? Go to uh, John, the 14th chapter. Okay, you said 14. Go, I know, but I'm going to read a 14 couple. 14 now? I'm going to read 14 and 15. Not all of them. Just reading some verses because I'm running out. Uh, the, uh, well, you, 14th got, you chapter. have more time to put it in um, later on. I will. The this 14th is, this chapter, is a continuing story. Right. The 14th chapter mm -hmm. of John, the 23rd verse. So you'll notice Jesus answered, if anyone really loves me, he will keep my word. Going back to the word, teaching. Mm -hmm. And the Father will love him and he will come to him and make our dwelling place in him. The one who does not really love me does not keep my word. Mm -hmm. And the word teaching which you hear is not mine, but the Father who sent me. Mm -hmm. And so this is why it's so important for us to stay in the word or you won't, and it got to be the, go God's straight. word. you go straight. And then if you go to John the 15th chapter, the seventh verse, it says, if you remain in me and my word remains in you, that is if you are vitally united and my message lives in your heart. Which verse is that? Uh, seven. Fifteen seven of John. Mm -hmm. If we are vitally united and my message lives in your heart, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Mm -hmm. This is where we get into praying to God and asking him uh, for the things we need or, or whatever someone else needs in our life and he will hear us. But you got to be in Christ. But you got to be in him. And he knows if you're in him because he can see in our heart as I had other classes and say that he can, he knows what's in there. But one thing, he has put it in there. And when you receive Christ, he pours everything that you need into your heart. But you got to remain, you know, let his word remain in you. And you remain in him. And the Holy Spirit will um, help you. The word of life. He is the word of life. And that's all we have to do, children. To stay in that word. He's blessed us in such a way where we can uh, come on Tuesday and Thursday and Saturday and Sunday and share the word of God with you. And I appreciate y'all being here and I pray that you uh, continue to stay in the word, but just not for yourself, but for your children, your grandchildren, your friends well, and family. Supposed to be telling their children. Uh, tell, the, tell them about Jesus. the Lord, Jesus Christ, the word. Tell them about Jesus. And I, uh, Thank you again. And I ask God to continue to bless you because he is blessing you. Amen. Amen and hallelujah. Amen. We'll see you the next time. Yeah. Until we meet again. Until we meet again.